Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation for a complex number. This channel is all about complex numbers, so everything you see here pretty much, and anytime you see a Z, that is a complex number. So, take a look at this equation. Does that look familiar to you? Maybe, maybe not. Z plus absolute value of Z. We talked about absolute value in our lecture videos. If you haven't seen them yet, please go ahead and check them out. I talked about absolute value, the conjugates, and all that stuff. This is time for practice, so I want to introduce you to a bunch of problems uh, that are kind of getting harder progressively. Hopefully, we'll get to harder problems in a little bit. So anyways, to solve these kinds of equations, there's a general strategy. Even though there might be different variations, especially when absolute value is involved, I don't think we have a lot of choices. But here's what we can do. Since z is a complex number, we can use the standard form of a complex number. Now, it's totally up to you which variables you like to use. But I like to use a plus bi or x plus yi. A plus bi is the name of the channel, by the way. But anyways, let's go ahead and use z equals x plus yi. Okay? That represents a complex number when x and y are real. That's an important distinction. Make no mistake. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the definition for absolute value of a complex number given in the standard form. What is the absolute value of x plus yi? By definition, it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. The absolute value is the distance from 0, just like normal real numbers, and it's basically two-dimensional, right? Instead of the one-dimensional number line. And it's always a real number, okay? So let's go ahead and plug it in. Z will be replaced with x plus yi. And absolute value of z is going to be replaced with the square root of x squared plus y squared. And this whole thing is equal to 8 minus 4i. Make sense? We got an equation with two variables. But we only got one equation? No. Actually, this is a special type of equation. You get two equations from here. Why? Because if two complex numbers are equal, let's remember that rule. If x plus yi, or I probably shouldn't use x plus yi in this case because we're using it. But let's say if a plus bi is equal to c plus di, this needs to happen. Two things must happen, a equals c and b equals d. If one of these fails, then uh, the equality is not going to be maintained. Make sense? So this is an important rule, something we didn't talk about in the lecture notes, but I'm hoping that it's pretty straightforward. Now, uh, we would like to set the equality, but we need to put the real parts together first, right? So what's the real part on the left-hand side? x plus the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's the real part, plus yi, and y is the imaginary part. On the right-hand side, we have 8 minus 4i, which you can also write it as a plus negative 4i, just to indicate that, oh, okay, the imaginary part is negative 4. It's not 4 because there's no minus sign in the original form. In the standard form, we always have a plus sign. Make sense? Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the real parts equal to each other. So real part equals the real part, and the imaginary part equals the imaginary part. Make sense? So we got two equations. Let's go ahead and establish those equations. The first equation gives me x plus the square root of x squared plus y squared equals 8. And the second equation simply tells me that y is equal to negative 4. How simple, right? That's pretty good. Now, we got a system, but the system is super duper easy to solve. Guess what? We're just going to plug in negative 4 into the first equation. And then from there, we can find x. We're not always this lucky. Sometimes you have to solve, you know, uh, you have to do more than this. Just wanted to start with a basic example to get the foundation. Okay. Replace x, I mean y with negative 4. x plus the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is 16, equals 8. This equation is not super easy to solve because it has a radical. But don't worry. You can go ahead and isolate the radical and then square both sides and then find x. When you square both sides in an equation, because 2 is an even power, you have to be careful. You must check your work. Because at the end, it may not work. So let's see. 
I'm going to square the left hand side, so it's going to get rid of the square root. And the right hand side is like a minus b squared, which is 64 minus 16x plus x squared. The nice thing about this, x squared cancels out. Awesome. So this is no longer quadratic, it is linear. So let's put the negative 16x on the left to make it positive. And let's subtract 16 from 64. That gives me 48. And yes, x equals 3 is the right answer, right? Okay. If you solve this equation, it has a single solution. It's linear. So we got the x value as well. So we got the y value and we got the x value. So what do you do with those? Put it together, right? We have to kind of bake it. How do you bake it? We need to write our z because our goal is to solve for z. Did it say that? I believe the thumbnail said that, but I don't think I have it here. But I'm hoping it's understood that we are supposed to solve for z. z is a complex number. It's unknown. Well, it was, right? So z is x plus yi. Remember our assumption at the very beginning. So take good notes so you know what you're doing. And then since x is 3 and y is negative 4, y was negative 4, right? Yes. The answer is going to be 3 minus 4i. So z is equal to that number, which is kind of somewhat special because 3, 4, 5 triangle. But I want to say something. You can go ahead and check your work. You don't have to do it, but it will be helpful sometimes, especially if you're a beginner or you're just new to complex numbers. You want to make sure, because confidence is an important thing. You really want to make sure, and we all make mistakes. You probably know I make a lot of mistakes in my videos. Sometimes I get catch them and cor correct them. Sometimes I don't, and you guys catch them. You're very good at catching mistakes, by the way. So good job. Anyways, so let's plug it in. What is z? 3 minus 4i. Right? This is easy. The absolute value of z is, again, I said 3, 4, 5 triangle, so it's just 5. If you think about the Pythagorean theorem, and from here we get 3 plus 5, which is 8, minus 4i, which is the same as this one, and yay, it checks. Therefore, our answer is correct. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.